Welcome to Out of Vintage, my name is Jonathan, and today we are taking a look at why people are quitting Depop. Um, over the past few weeks, there have been several people on social medias leaving Depop, having ranges at Depop, little passive-aggressive pops at them. Um, and this is all down to sales being slow. Reselling is kind of seasonal. Um, you'll get a lot of sales um, during very specific points in the year. As you've seen from my videos, I focus heavily on winter because winter is one of those big seasons. Summer is the other big season, but it's actually fairly small. Spring and autumn are kind of those iffy little things in between. But summer can be pretty slow, especially right now when you've got sporting events on. We're coming out of lockdown, so lots of people are heading out. They're not spending the money on clothes. They're not spending as much time on their phone with nothing to do. Uh, and as such, sales have come down. Now, obviously, I've been doing this for 15 plus years, and I can tell you that summer is generally slow. Um, July, August, it's a good six-week period, where, and it, it's, it's basically slow. It's not great. Um, now, what you see is sellers who have only been selling for a short period of time, two, three years, they will start to panic a little bit, and they'll start trying to jump ship. They're going to start looking at other platforms because that's what they believe is the issue. Um, sadly, it's not the issue. What they, The reason why they see a benefit by going to these new platforms is because they're being active. They're actively listing on a new platform in front of a new audience where if they already had that stock listed ready to go, they're not going to, they wouldn't have seen such a dramatic change. Um, how, how do we handle this kind of stuff? How do we handle this kind of situation. Um, as I've said previously on many occasions, you want to be diverse with your listings. You want to be selling on other platforms, eBay, Etsy, ASOS, Suco, Instagram, Facebook, pop-up shops, whatever your option is, retail, opening a retail space, um, whether it's on a market or in a shop or on a high street, whatever whatever your pickle is. Um, you want to be picking something to like supplement your existing shop. Now, if you only have a Depop shop, you really want to be making sure you branch out because at any given time, something can happen on Depop, sales are gonna drop through the floor um, and you're gonna, you're gonna want that backup sales from another account. Uh, I don't like eBay. I still have an eBay account. I don't like Etsy at all. I still have an Etsy account. I still put stuff on there and it still sells. Now eBay, for example, I predominantly use my eBay during winter. Um, at the minute, my eBay is probably pulling in about five, 600 quid a month. During winter, it pulls in six, seven grand a month because I target certain markets. Um, you want to be doing the same. Never get rid of your shop, right? Don't close your Depop and leave Depop in a big, ha ha, I've left Depop, fuck Depop. Don't be doing that. Use your Depop. And if it's going slow, cross list to eBay. Easy enough to do, I've showed you many times. Um, even list stuff specifically for eBay. If you have stuff on your Depop that isn't selling, remove it if you want, put it on eBay, see how it goes there. Put it on ASOS, see how it goes there. They all have different fee structures. You're, all, you're paying for a service regardless. You're always gonna be paying for a service. Etsy, uh, sorry, Depop, um, and eBay are roughly the same. Etsy's a tiny bit cheaper-ish. Uh, Isoco, far less uh, customers on there, but far lower fees. Uh, ASOS, far higher fees. You need to adapt your pricing up to kind of compensate uh, for the increased cost of using that platform. Um, but that's kind of back to the point. Back to the point, so the point being Times like now, where things are slow, this is the time where you really want to start diversifying and making sure you have backups on other platforms ready to go, available when you need them. Um, Becky's Bazaar was doing a Q&A on Instagram. If you haven't followed Becky's Bazaar on Instagram, uh, you should. It's a masterclass on social media, just watching uh, the way she uses social media. It's um, her and Jack Dainty, it's like a masterclass on social media, honestly. Um, I learned so much just by watching their social media. I can't do what they do, but um, 
it's impressive to watch. Uh, and I was speaking, she did a QA and a and people were asking what to do during the slow times. Um, and she has the same thing as me. It's like during the slow times, this is where you need to be kind of, you need to be proactively making yourself money. If the platform that you're currently on isn't making you enough, start cross-listing to other platforms because ultimately the more eyes you have on your products, the more sales you're going to get. Um, and I asked her, for, like, I said, you know, I, I agreed with what she said and I said, well, you know, what advice, other advice would you give? Uh, and she's like, well, when things are bad for me, that's when I focus on accounting. I focus on my social media content because um, that really helps drive sales. Um, focuses on finding new suppliers. There's always something else you can be doing. Being on social media complaining because sales are slow isn't benefiting you. It's just wasting your time and that's time you could be putting in to finding a solution to be generating more income. Um, even taking time off was another suggestion. It's just like, just take some time off. If sales are slow and you're happy with the amount of stuff you have listed, just take a couple of days off, chill out. It seems hard, it seems like the worst time to do it, but you'll find that if you take a few days off and relax, sales actually pick back up on their own. The other week, sales were pretty bad. Like They were really low. All my shops were down 50%, which is huge. It's a massive drop in income. But during that time, I gave me time to focus. We changed the backgrounds on some of the shops, as you may have seen on social media. Uh, and I started sorting uh, our secondary like portion of a business out, which is wholesale. Um, and I spent the basically the best part of this week downstairs sorting the wholesale area out, ready so we can start opening to let people come through. What I haven't done is I haven't closed my Depops. My Depops are still there. We're still listing on those actively. Um, because sales were slower, I cross-listed more stuff to eBay, try and bring those uh, sales back up through eBay. There are many, many things you can be doing. The one thing you just don't want to be doing, though, is wasting your time complaining. It, honestly, you're, all you're doing is hindering yourself by doing it. And ultimately, you're self-employed. You're the one who's generating your money. So you want to be making sure that you're maximizing that by trying to generate sales through as many platforms as possible. There is no eBay versus, there is no Depop versus Etsy, Etsy versus eBay, ASOS versus Depop. They are all there for you to generate money, so use them. They're all tools at your disposal, and they're all tools that you should be proactively using to generate your income. You do not owe any of these platforms any loyalty. All you, all you, um, you're doing is generating them money by paying their fees. So use whichever platform you feel is best. So hopefully it's been helpful. Um, do not quit Depop. Do not quit any platform. Use all the platforms. If you find one's working better for you, put your time into that platform. But if it isn't, keep it there, keep it ready, because all it takes is ASOS to one day shoot up and be like the next big shit hot thing like Depop was a couple of years ago, and everybody will flood to uh, ASOS and you'll get a load of sales there, and then in a few years time it'll trickle back down and you'll be back on Depop again because it's still consistent because they already have the customer base. But that's enough of me rambling on. Hopefully this has been helpful. Um, let's do what we can to make as much profit as we can. And until next time, my name is Jonathan and this is How to Vintage.